hello and use a new software so bear with me uh, I'm using Camtasia suggested by uh, user MMS1911 um, made a suggestion to switch to software willing to try all different types of software so Camtasia here we are uh, I'm using Camtasia 7 um, supposedly it's working and uh, we're gonna find out uh, so if the audio's the main reason of switching was audio uh, so if the audio is really good you know who to thank if it's really bad you know who to blame mostly the second one you can also thank me if it's good audio too um, alright so besides just mindlessly clicking on plus and minus signs uh, let's actually do something um, all right. This is a request how to make it so units cannot pass through buildings uh, without making the build building solid. The problem with making buildings solid is the units go around solid objects. So you can't make the building solid. The way to get around this is to take the sprite, duplicate it, and make it 90% smaller. The way you do that is you take whatever it is, edit it, transform, scale, and then go in here and just hit 90 and it'll be 90% smaller. And I can go ahead and delete that sprite because I don't need it, I already did it all. And then what you do is you create it into a solid object, just whatever the building is, uh, underscore mask or mask underscore whatever it is, and then in the building, on the create, have it create, instance underscore create, x comma y comma whatever the object name is. That way, it creates the object underneath it, uh, you can make it visible. The way to make it visible is set its depth to 1, visible to 0, and solid visible. You can uncheck and solid checked. What that'll do is uh, it means you can collide with it. It's always beneath all the other objects, so that way you can't see it even if you check it visible. But it's 90% smaller, so you can still collide with the initial object, but you can't go through it. And 90% is such a small detail. I mean, 90% of 64 is 2, 3 pixels, but that 2 or 3 pixels is enough for the object to collide with it, but not go through the building. It has a really nice effect. Uh, now, the other things we have is making units attack automatically. Now, the way we do that is, we add this cool new code. Uh, I'll put it in the description, and you can just, I'll show you how to edit with it, but I'll explain it to you. First of all, we set attacking to zero, and all, that way we don't have to delete all the other instances of attacking, but if you want to go through, you can. I was really lazy and didn't. Then we have range equals 64. Range can be whatever you want. That's one of the easy editing things. I'm going to be going over editing units later. Now, if instance underscore nearest, in parentheses, x comma y comma attack underscore spot, in parentheses dot x, is less than x plus range, two and symbols, instance underscore nearest in parentheses x comma y comma attack underscore spot and parentheses dot x is greater than x minus range. What this is, it's a big test to see whether that attack underscore spot is 64 pixels to the left or the right of the object. Now it has to be within that 128 pixels in order for it to be in range, but it also has to do that vertically. So we take the exact same code, copy it, paste it, and change the x's to y's, except for the instances where we're in the function and it's instance underscore nearest. So we just change the x's to y's and we're good. Now range comes in with 64 pixels, so it's 64 pixels to the left or to the right. If you want to be a high range unit, change that 64 to 128 or 96, something like that. Play with it until you get it right. Now under both of these questions, we have attacking equals 1. So if the answer to both those questions is yes, it is within range, attacking is now 1. And then we have if attacking equals 1, alarm 1 equals 30, and instance underscore create, in parentheses x, comma y, comma bullet underscore self. So we create the bullet, we set the alarm up for another time. If you want to change the speed of fire, then change that 30 right there. So now you can change the range and the speed of fire very easily in your code. Now the other way to edit a unit and make it more versatile is speed. And speed you can find under the step event and the main code. And here we have if moving equals 1, 
then we have mp underscore potential step that function in that function there's a number right now it's five if you want to make it go faster make the number higher if you want it to go slower make the number lower now you'll see i made a new unit in the step i made it speed three this is a very slow unit i also did something pretty cool if moving equals one image underscore speed equals one and if moving equals zero image underscore speed equals zero now we already have moving as a variable so now we know whether the object's moving or not we can use that to have an animated unit all you have to do is tank the animated unit and you have a whole bunch of sub-images of its animation. Now what this does is it stops and plays the animation by changing the speed. This means the unit can move, animate when it's moving, and stop when it's not. So you simply do the speed to whether it's moving or not. And lastly we have this thing where scrolling moves with up, down, left, and right as well as WSAD and on the places, or when you're placing a building, collision with scrolling, we have a piece of code that says place equals one, and under step, we have this thing where if there's an object scrolling x mouse underscore x, y mouse underscore y, we have a block of code that says place equals one. That means when you collide with scrolling, and scrolling is where the unit is, it is placeable because we need it so that on the beginning, if a spot is collision free, all objects. That way, if there's something there, you can't put it on, including bumpy decorations or rocks or wherever. That way you can limit the player. But scrolling being an object that the player doesn't have to worry about, we don't want to bother him. So we need to make sure that it can go on the object scrolling. So that's all the fine tuning for now. Next time we're going to be going over menu, which will be a short tutorial, which means I can show you everything I just talked about. And that should be up right after this, if the software works goodly. So, uh, thanks for watching. Please rate, please comment, and please leave suggestions on future tutorials.